Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear chairman, <clears throat> thanks to the vascular domain for giving me this somewhat challenging topic and invite me to this meeting of dinosaurs. It's because we are talking here about two millimeters of height and its effect on 10 years outcome. On the other hand, in a, I don't know, next room, Tavi swept away uh, one third of our caseload in aortic valve surgery. So um, I think we are, um, um, and what we might not forget is, it, at least for me, the impression um, that the average institution has one expert in aortic root pathology, and we are talking, uh, and, and, and we have to be somewhat careful in rushing our young surgeons into aggressive uh, cases maybe in acute dissection late at night when uh, they are standing and we are happy they, they do the pental procedure without any complications. So I think um, th that drives me to have a somewhat uh, rather conservative uh, standpoint in the challenging uh, uh, question of the pulmonary autograft in aortic root pathology. And first, I think when I face a patient, in particular it's a young patient, I think it's the clinical status that is relevant for me. Do we treat symptoms, so maybe an aortic stenosis with multiple syncopia, uh, or do we just treat diameter? So I think the, uh, the safety net for uh, asymptomatic patient and his expect expectations on surgery are certainly different than a highly symptomatic patient. Of course, when talking about autographs, age is um, a an, an, an very important factor. And of course, for these patients, in particular when it's asymptomatic, the, um, uh, the, we have carefully weighed the risk of surgery versus the risk um, um, of conservative procedure and taking into account the potential risk after surgery. So valve-related problems um, as well as the potential risk and incidence and prevalence of redo surgery in these young patients. Of course, we have to look at the uh, aortic valve pathology. Is it a significant lesion or do, is, uh, do we just treat um, um, diameters or echo findings? Is it a bicuspid, is it stenotic or a regurgitant valve? And um, when, um, um, in particular when dealing with autograft, we have to carefully look and uh, consider our strategy uh, about the root dimensions, uh, about the dimension or diameter of the sinotabular junction, is it, as is it sy symmetric or asymptomatic enlargement of the root? Uh, and uh, what is the affection or involvement of the arch in the ascending aorta in these patients? Last year I was given the talk about um, the 66-year-old patient and the aortic root replacement, and I ended or I concluded in a variety of approaches uh, which have to be individually tailored. It needs that you have a broader armamentarium, and it's not a single solution uh, for, for a single patient, even when it's uh, 66 years of age. And I think that's the same for me in, uh, in the young patients. Of course, we are dreaming of the ideal valve substitute, so with an physio almost physiologic performance, no gradients, laminar flow, no, re no regurg, uh, no thromboembolic risk, no need of oral anticoagulation, no noise, which is um, uh, still a big problem to many patients. Minimal operative risk, uh, and in particular when talking about autographs, there is uh, at least a high um, uh, technical standard needed to do this, and of course long-term durability. Um, the pulmonary autograft was introduced in the late 60s by Donald Ross. It's a genius a surgeon and a genius procedure, um, fulfilling ma many of these requirements. It was autologous, no need of or uh, or the, um, uh, oral anticoagulation, um, it turned out that root replacement seems to be the better option or the, the more widely uh, applied option as compared to the subcoronary implantation. And it's many surgeons think that's maybe the, perf the perfect procedure for young patients. Um, there's only one problem. It's a, a highly elegant procedure. So it's um, somewhat like the switch for the adult surgeon. Um, and I think this is has the problem that it maybe affects also the ego of the surgeon, and maybe the ego of the surgeon in some cases is bigger than the need of the patient. So um, I think we have always to reconsider this. So in my personal daily practice, what is my ideal Ross candidate so far? A patient with an isolated aortic valve stenosis, preferably it should be congenital stenosis. Um, he should have a normal dimension of the ascending order because I don't like to, um, into, uh, to, to place an, um, a, a ROS procedure and then uh, maybe um, to be somewhat aggressive interpose a vascular graft. I, I don't think this is a very good option. Um, he should be with a maximum 45 years of age and he should 
strongly uh, from his personal wishes and his and intense discussion argue that he is against oral anticoagulation. So maybe for, I don't know, more heavy sports or uh, a profession with the risk, with an inc really increased risk of bleeding. And I do have some limitations in this. So of course it's multiple valve disease, it's coronary artery disease, it's limited life expectancy in the ROS procedure affecting this. Very rarely it's uh, the pre-op finding of uh, uh, an anal anomaly of the pulmonary valve and of course the Marfan disease is a limitation. And I think that also the pathology of the aortic root at least in my uh, daily practice, is a certain limitation uh, for offering the patient or convincing maybe the patient or agreeing to uh, the Ross um, uh, concept in a young patient. From the really uh, well worked up uh, German Dutch registry on the Ross procedures uh, driven by Sievers and his co workers, we know that the Ross in the adults have an excellent uh, survival rate uh, with um, so 95% at 10 years, which is really excellent. On the other hand, we might not forget that comparing this data from the ROS procedure to mechanical aortic valve replacement, here is the Van Oenhausen experience with optimal anticoagulation management. Um, they fairly compare, so uh, it's not the survival benefit uh, that is really um, in favor of the, um, of the ROS procedure in these patients. And even the more tougher group as the, uh, the, the pental procedure in the bicuspid um, uh, in the setting of the bicuspid aortic valve, they even they, uh, those patients, and there is a, a tough procedure with, I don't know, 50%, uh, uh, roughly 50% being uh, a mechanical and 50% being biological valves, even these patients do extremely well as compared to the normal population. So I think um, uh, uh, the benchmark for the ROS procedure uh, is increasing um, by, I think, by each slide I'm, I'm presenting for me. Um, from the registry, uh, we have learned that the reoperation rate of the ROS is rather low. Nevertheless, it's one, um, out of 1,400 patients, 99 patients required reoperation of, of the aortic root, which, in, at least in a not that experienced hand, still is a tough procedure. Um, and what we have learned that reinforcement of the, analog, of the analogs um, is definitely beneficial at least when we are dealing with uh, uh, ROS candidates with an enlarged aortic, um, 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 uh, enlarged annular, uh, annulus of the, um, of the aortic root, whereas the non-reinforced um, <coughs> aortic annulus, um, in particular when it's done in aortic regurgitation, uh, has a higher reoperation rate. On the other hand, of course, we have the problem, the second problem of the reoperation rate of the pulmonary autograft, uh, which is um, technically not that demanding, but nevertheless, uh, it is uh, uh, definitely a risk and it is a, harm, a potential harm to the patient um, when he goes for reoperation um, of the pulmonary homograft. So this ends up with a. 12 years freedom of reoperation, about uh, roughly uh, show, uh, 82, 83 percent, which is good results. Nevertheless, in this age, the patient still is 40 to 50 years old at the state of reoperation. Um, uh, so I think this should always be a matter of discussion with the patient uh, when uh, following the Ross principle. And we have learned that it's the young patients. Um, and in particular, if, uh, that it's the, the elderly, um, they have a shorter time uh, to the autograft reoperation. It's when we do not reinforce the root, uh, in particular when, the, um, uh, when there is a aortic regurgitation present, then these patients do have a shorter time to reoperation. Um, and uh, uh, all over, the independent of the root, uh, of the size of the annulus, aortic regurgitation have, um, has an increased risk. Uh, often um, uh, reoperation uh, of the autograft. On the other hand, on the pulmonary uh, side, of course, the younger uh, patients, uh, the congenitals and the pediatric cases uh, do, do have a um, higher incidence of reoperation as well as the, um, uh, the elderly do have a higher rate of reoperation. Um, when splitting up between aortic stenosis and aortic regurg, um, survival is, is, uh, fairly, uh, is fairly identical. Nevertheless, um, in this uh, uh, patient from, from the U.S. Uh, setting, from a, a very active group, uh, we found that the 
incidence uh, of reoperation uh, is definitely much higher when uh, the ROS procedure was performed in patients with primarily aortic insufficiency as compared to aortic stenosis. Um, patients um, in aortic stenosis do have an uh, excellent long-term outcome. And we might not forget that uh, uh, valve uh, repair, uh, uh, either with the David, preferring my technique, or the Jakub, in a primary aortic regurgitation does have really excellent long-term results, as we have seen um, in a long series. So um, I think we have to be somewhat reluctant. Of course, there is the challenging topic, ROS procedure in the bicuspids versus ROS procedure in the tricuspids. Um, and I think it adds just another stone uh, to the puzzle for me uh, that, that we see on the left side. You see that, the, um, that over time, the ROS procedure, the annulus uh, uh, does, does dilate over time. It's not that it's statistically significant, but nevertheless, uh, I think it adds a certain um, um, a stone to the bustle that in bicuspids, the ROS seems uh, to um, uh, cause dilatation of the annulus over time, over 12 years. Uh, Ryan has uh, nicely comprehended this, that patients with aortic regurgitation um, do have an annular dilatation, they do have a root dilatation, they do have a uh, dilatation of the sinotubular junction as well as uh, of the ascending aorta, uh, and, or they do have a combination, plus minus they do have a connective tissue disease, and I think that in these particular patients the ROS procedure is not, um, um, is not the optimal procedure. Even when you see, like in this slide, you see here um, um, a, a, a fixed, a fixed um, uh, sinotubular junction due to reinforcement and maybe a fixed andalus due to reinforcement. Uh, nevertheless, there is an aggressive eccentric dilatation um, of, the, um, uh, of the autographed root of the sinuses, and we have, as we heard today, no clear cut indication when to reoperate these patients. Do normal values of five centimeters, six centimeters, are they valid also for the, for the pulmonary uh, root now in the aortic position? And there is conflicting evidence for the surgeon uh, how to deal with the ascending aorta in um, aortic root pathology when we offer, uh, when we discuss about a root. Um, and um, there is, sorry, it's the wrong citation here. It's, it's um, uh, uh, in circulation this year. I think it was Roberts who published this, um, that there is in there is a difference in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation concerning the quality of the uh, quality of the uh, aortic wall. Uh, so meaning that there's a loss of aortic medial fiber, elastic fibers, in um, uh, more pronounced in the aortic regurgitation as compared to the aortic stenosis patients, indicating that we should be aggressive in treating this. And I don't know whether aggressive interposition of a vascular prosthesis between um, the autograft and the normal aortic wall is really an elegant procedure. I'm not very certain for this, uh, about this. On the other hand, there are, there are, there's evidence or uh, approach to evidence that there is no really difference in bicuspid and tricuspids uh, concerning um, um, apoptosis of smooth muscle, muscle cells in these cells, um, and also no difference be between regurg uh, and um, aortic stenosis. Um, uh, so I think that there is still not the answer given for us surgeons. Should we um, uh, be aggressive in the ROS procedure in treating the ascending aorta in these patients? And just reviewing some last week's cases, uh, I'm not very certain. Here is a 28-year-old uh, patient with a Marfan disease. I think definitely for me no ROS candidate because um, um, uh, because we have to also primarily focus, beside curement of the, of the root, on aggressive treatment of the ascending aorta and the arch. On the other hand, 26-year-old patients with uh, bicuspid aortic valve, and we are definitely uncertain what is this area here. Um, and you know that, the, that, the, that maybe the autograft ends up here, so we, we're ending up with a potentially risky area of two centimeters of ascending aorta with or without reinforcement of the sinotubular junction thereafter. Um, so I think um, a 26-year-old 20 year uh, patient needs to be a, a solution where you're 100% sure that you are do aggressively treatment uh, his long-term prognosis uh, and not do it just for because it's a nice procedure. 
although I always have to say I like the ROS procedure in, in the right, if it's the right indication. So I think for me personally, there are six facts against an expanded use of the ROS procedures in patients with aortic root pathology. And I think that's, that's important to me. I think it's definitely annular dilatation in particular when the patients do have uh, aortic regurgitations. It's not that often in patients with uh, congenitally um, 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 originating um, aortic stenosis. It's the sinotubular junction. I think this can easily be treated if, you, if the other indications are quite okay with reinforcement of the sinotubular junction. At least in our country, we face a certain shortage of allografts for the, for the interposition um, in, um, in, the, in the pulmonary side. It is the dilatation uh, of the sinuses, in particular within the first decade after operation. Nevertheless, there is a certain risk of um, uh, operative trauma due to the expanded procedure, which indicates it should be still reserved to experts, at least experts of this type of procedure. Um, and of course, we have still to have in our focus the problem of autograph failure. I think for me, a potential solution definitely is the modified ROS, um, uh, and that's a concept I'm, I'm trying to follow now, is uh, the implantation into a prosthesis which not only um, uh, has the, the advantage of uh, fixation of the, of the ring, of the annulus, as well as the sinotubular junction, but in particular, it gives you the chance to be extremely aggressive in treating also of the ascending aorta and maybe also uh, of the proximal involved arch by uh, using it in a circulatory arrest to be aggressive in terms of treatment of also the aortic pathology in these patients. So if I may uh, conclude from my personal standpoint, I love the ROS procedure if the indication is okay. And I think that the aortic stenosis is a very good indication in this patient. Nevertheless, we have to uh, intensively discuss this with the patient about all pros and all cons, uh, about the benefit of the uh, oral anti uh, anticoagulation, about all uh, potential harms of oral anticoagulation. I think that with increasing spread, spreading of the self-management of the oral anticoagulation, this is a, for, in particular for the young and well-educated people, I think this is a good option for these patients too. Um, you need to have a good surgical experience when you run a, uh, a, um, a program. Of course, there are certain rules, so uh, reinforcement of the, of, the an, uh, of the rules of the annulus as well as the sinotubular junction, in particular when uh, dealing with, with aortic regurgitation patients. I think that we so strongly consider the modified ROS procedure as a potential solution for, its, for the future. And you have to have the ability of valve uh, preserving late reoperations after ROS procedure, which is a surprisingly safe and surprisingly good procedure. Nevertheless, if you run a ROS procedure uh, program, then you should have also the ability within uh, your hands or at least within your team to do this. I think that there are definitely better options in aortic regurgitation patients with root pathology. I think that in this case, the David or the Pendel procedures are the better, uh, are the better solutions uh, for this uh, type of disease and also for treatment of these patients. And I think that the elegance of the procedure definitely for me does not justify its overuse in the wrong indication. Thank you. <laughs>